I don't think that I'm a caveman. I think that traditional men have a perspective. and we You're not traditional. You're not traditional. If you're not paying all of the bills, you're not traditional. Stop saying that. Growing up in like that two-parent household, uh, you just see a, a, a system that works, right? And ultimately, it's, uh, the one thing I can say for me is I think- Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Let me stop him right there because he on book right now. Your mom and your daddy broke up. You did not see no system that worked. If it worked, they wouldn't have broke up. I know what a system that works look like. I do, because I came from a two-parent household as well. And guess what? My parents broke up when my daddy died. And do you know the one thing about my daddy that I don't see amongst none of you? It's called responsibility, accountability. My pa ain't never ran from no responsibility. He was a single father of two kids when him and his first wife divorced. And what I learned from that two-parent household is as a man, you are just as responsible in the household, if not more, than the woman. My daddy cleaned up after himself, so my mama didn't have a lot of work to do. He also cooked because he enjoyed it. So he cooked, and as he cooked, he cleaned. And then whatever was left, either I or my mother was responsible for. When my mama came home late at night from her job, my dad would get up in the middle of the night and make my mom a sandwich because he knew she probably hadn't ate since 2 o'clock that afternoon. You don't know what a, what a real relationship looked like. And I can tell because when your wife got cancer, you did not change any of your requirements when your requirements were already too damn much. Cause it sounds like you talking to people who ain't never had no, no two parent household. So they don't know what you saying is But thank you, Carlos. Thank you. I appreciate you for this. I'm so glad that you're doing this. I'm so glad that you're showing us how they really think. Because it should then show you that most of them think like this on varying degrees. And then you should recognize and check in on your relationships. Check in on your relationships, because if you are married to men or you're in relationships with men that look like any of these men, run. Run before they suck you dry over at the Oppressed Women's Network. Thank you for showing us how women are oppressed in their marriages and their relationships under the guise of, 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 of family and the nuclear family and black excellence. And all my decisions, even the ones that come on TV, uh, they can be challenged, you know, um, the whole uh, thought process of, of bringing Kylie down here so that I can raise my son was one that, oh my God, I, I never thought, thought we were gonna get that kind of blowback behind that decision. But, you know, everybody says what they do. You know, every every woman says, I really want my, my uh, baby's dad to have a role in his life or I really want him to do whatever for his kids until he's really to do whatever for his kids. That was a whatever type of decision. I don't like the way he continues to give Kimmy the moniker like she didn't want him to take care of his son. And oh, women always try to act like they want you to be in your kid's life, but not unless it's gonna inconvenience them. And it's like, but it shouldn't inconvenience her as much as it does though. You want her to act like she's the biological parent and she's not. And she's purposefully, I think, keeping an emotional barrier between she and Monster, not only because he's too old to be mothered in an affectionate way from someone that's not really his mother, first of all, but second of all, because she knows as soon as she is emotionally connected to that boy, you will use him against her because you already do. You Anytime she doesn't want to do what you want her to do, you try to throw it in her face like she doesn't really want to be a parent. First of all, before I get to the question, a lot of people are upset that you also call him Monster. And they, they, want, they want you to stop calling this black man Monster. What do you have to say about that? Monster's a very polarizing figure, right? And if, if they call 50 Cent Monster, everybody's like, man, Monster, I'm here doing it, right? <laughs> If, if, if you see somebody on a, on a football field, you say he's balling, they call him a monster. If you see a tycoon out here in business, they call him a monster. It's polarizing because you can also say person in prison, they call him a monster. These are some of the definitions of monsters so I want people to know. A threatening force, a person of unnatural or extreme ugliness, deformity, wickedness, or cruelty, one that is highly successful. That's a definition of monster. Yeah, yeah. He skipped over the cruelty part. He skipped over the cruelty part. What the Scots have mastered is playing in your face, telling you the facts of a situation and acting like it's not what it is. Like, yeah, I'm saying that this is cruelty, but I'm going to point out the, the part where you're successful because I'm okay with you being cruel as long as you're successful. And that is problematic. Let me be honest with you, man. The, cl the cleanliness of your room is not that high on my list, right? Uh, you're getting good grades in school. That matters. Those who think they're smart, but they're really not. Cleaning teaches discipline. It also helps you clear out your mental. So you just want your son to be trifling. That's what this sounds like. Y'all trifling. Do you know what my dad would say to me? Hey, get up and go wash those dishes before your mom comes home. She's going to be tired. She shouldn't have to see dishes in the sink when she comes through the door. So do you know what that taught me? To be, to be thoughtful of my mother being tired and wanting to help her. Because I'm a kid and I'm not thinking about that. So he would tell me that 
So I knew when I was cleaning that I was helping my mother. The fact that you didn't sit down and have a conversation with your son to show that cleaning his house and cooking your own food would help Kimmy. And that's how you show love and respect for Kimmy. And that's how you teach your son responsibility. Because if he doesn't do what he's supposed to do, then he doesn't get what he wants. What are you talking about? If I didn't clean up, I couldn't go outside. If I didn't clean up, I couldn't go nowhere on the weekend. I know I have to do certain things that I don't want to do so I can do the things that I want to do. It taught me discipline. There's a difference between wants and needs, all right? And I'm a person who actually needs sex, not a person who wants sex. Now, at times I want it, but I actually need it. So life throws us curveballs like- I'm gonna let him finish. What we're going through right now, and what Kimmy is doing is admirable as a spouse. To roll over and suffer through it, um, I was hoping it would be a suffering. <laughs> I suffer moment, but she rolls over and suffer through it, fakes it all for me. Because at that moment, it's something that she completely didn't desire, right? And it, I kind of look at it as if, and this is, you know, all jokes aside, I look at it as her standing by me while I'm standing by her. So um, it's difficult. So to be clear, you have a sex addiction and you're equating her suffering through sex while going through chemo and radiation as the same thing as you staying with her while she has cancer. Mind you, you don't cook. You don't clean, and every conversation is an unnecessary disagreement. We should all feel that we would be better people and say, oh, no, I don't want or need sex for however long it takes for you to recover, but we then live in reality where that's not true. Okay. I want to ask you this. So when you say you need sex now... So there's a reality where... There's a reality where men can't have this space. See, women, this is why I feel like you shouldn't care that much about cheating on you. You shouldn't. If you're going to be with a girl like this then he should not be able to hold cheating over your head. It only gives him power over you. If he is holding him cheating over your head to get sex that you don't want to give out of, out of you, then you need to let him go ahead and cheat. But you're not about to use me to masturbate your body and then try to guilt me into doing it when I don't want to to satisfy your weird ass need to have sex twice a day, every day. Go and be single. Or go check yourself into a hospital because you have a sex addiction, sir. So he can't be single because then he wouldn't have a woman in the house to raise his son for him. And you could send your son back to live with his mama, but then you wouldn't be able to take the, the, the credit for raising him. And you want to be able to say, oh, I took care of my son. I raised my son. When the truth of the matter is, you probably made Kaya would do all the heavy lifting when y'all was together. And then when you left, you probably wasn't doing none of the heavy lifting then. And now he is a teenager and you still don't want to do no heavy lifting. You still just want Kimmy to do it for you. And roll over and suffer through sex while going through chemo. Ain't that about a bitch? I ain't mad at that response, brother. <laughs> oh, listen. They are getting so much joy out of the agreements in his cruelty. Because this is cruel. Like, to be very clear, it is very much cruel to allow her to physically suffer through something for your benefit. You don't love her. You don't love her. You don't love her. There's nothing about that that feels selfless, that feels like care, that feels like love. This lady is going through cancer. And do you know every time she talks on camera, she says the thing that's stressing her out the most is him and his son?